A very warm welcome to you to St John's Rectory for this Eucharist on the second Sunday of Easter. It is the second Sunday of Easter and not the Sunday after Easter because Easter continues not just for a day, not just for a week even, but it continues for 50 days until Pentecost. So there are seven Sundays in Eastertide and uh, throughout the season there are special features of joyfulness uh, in the liturgy of the church, including white vestments and the frequent use of the word Alleluia and also the Easter candle stands traditionally near to the altar. Uh, in this case of course it's on the altar because uh, otherwise it couldn't be seen, uh, but traditionally stands near the altar. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of mercy, you wash away our sins in water, you give us new birth in the Spirit, and redeem us in the blood of Christ. As we celebrate Christ's resurrection, increase our awareness of these blessings, and renew your gift of life within us. We make our prayer for our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. These, the new converts, remained faithful to the teaching of the Apostles, to the brotherhood, to the breaking of bread, and to the prayers. The many miracles and signs worked through the Apostles made a deep impression on everyone. The faithful all lived together and owned everything in common. They sold their goods and possessions, and shared out the proceeds among themselves according to what each one needed. 
They went as a body to the temple every day, but met in their houses for the breaking of bread. They shared their food gladly and generously. They praised God and were looked up to by everyone. Day by day, the Lord added to their community those destined to be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus said, you believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint John. Glory to you, O Lord. In the evening of the same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed into the room where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his son. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. Thomas called the twin, who is one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. When the disciples said, We have seen the Lord, he answered, Unless I see the holes that the nails made in his hands, and can put my finger into the holes they made, and unless I can put my hand into his side, I refuse to believe. Eight days later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. The doors were closed, but Jesus came and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he spoke to Thomas, Put your finger here. Look, here are my hands. Give me your hand. Put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas replied, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. As well as being known as the second Sunday of Easter, this Sunday has a number of interesting names. It's often called Low Sunday, and some scholars believe that this name evolved from the Latin word for praise, Lord, uh, and that uh, word praise or Lord being used uh, in the hymn that was often used uh, in the liturgy just before the gospel during Eastertide. Now, in the early church, this Sunday was also known as Alb Sunday, or Sunday in Albs. Uh, and the idea here was that at the Easter vigil, on the night before Easter Day, new church members were baptised, and when they were, after they were baptised, they were clothed with white garments uh, and uh, or albs uh, coming from the uh, Latin word for white. And they wore these white robes, these albs, throughout Easter week, returning to church for further instruction and further Christian duties during the days of Easter week. And then uh, they returned uh, on the Sunday, the following Sunday, uh, the, third, the second Sunday of Easter, uh, and uh, they attended the Eucharist dressed in their albs, and then they uh, took them off and returned them, and then 
took on their ordinary clothes. Uh, during the 4th century in the Roman Empire, Easter week was a holiday so that people could continue with their religious duties. And in some Orthodox churches, uh, the doors to the sanctuary, which are traditionally closed off except during the liturgy, they remain open during Easter week in honour of the resurrection. Now the Orthodox have perhaps, or some Orthodox, have perhaps the best name for this Sunday. They sometimes call it Thomas Sunday because of this Sunday's Gospel reading about Thomas not believing that Jesus had appeared to the other Apostles on Easter evening until the following Sunday when Jesus appeared again and this time Thomas was with them. And let us think about Thomas for a moment now. Thomas uh, had a very great virtue, a very great strength, but he also made a big mistake. His great virtue, his great strength, was that he absolutely refused to believe uh, when he did not believe, or to say that he understood something that he did not understand. He didn't try to still his doubts by pretending that they didn't exist. There is no virtue in glibly repeating things that we haven't thought out or simply accepting things uh, because they are the accepted convention, the accepted uh, belief. Uh, in the past, I suspect a lot of people believed in the Christian faith because that was the conventional thing to do. That was what uh, society did and society uh, uh, encouraged you to do. You believed because of what you were told. Nowadays, I suspect a lot of people don't believe the Christian faith uh, because uh, that is the conventional thing to do. That is the default position, not to believe. And I suspect some people say, I'm an atheist, uh, as an excuse for not thinking through the issues. Some people, not everyone of course, but some people simply accept non-belief uh, because nowadays that's the conventional thing to do. So the person who challenges the conventional opinion is good. Thomas challenged uh, what he was told and that led to him in due course the following week experiencing the risen Lord for himself. If we believe, not because of what we are told, but because of our own search for and our own discovery of God, that is the greatest faith, going from convention to doubt, can then in due course lead to the deepest certitude, the deepest conviction. So that's Thomas's great strength, his great virtue. But Thomas also made a big mistake. He had withdrawn from the Apostles. He had, in effect, withdrawn from the Christian community. He sought comfort in solitude rather than with his fellow Christians. And in so doing, he missed out on the first coming of the risen Lord. It is natural for us, sometimes in times of difficulty, to shut ourselves off from others. But things can happen within the community of the faithful, which will not happen alone. There we find the living witness to the faith uh, in the Word of God preached and shared. There we receive the assurance of forgiveness in the sacrament of absolution. There we receive uh, the touch of our dear Lord's healing in the sacrament of the laying on of hands and anointing. There we receive the very presence of our Lord in the sacrament of our Lord's body and blood. Of course, these things at the moment are for a while denied us. But this time away from the Church's fellowship can give us a chance to pause and to value these things more deeply. In the old prayer book liturgy, there were the uh, so-called comfortable words. They were a central feature of the Eucharist. Jesus saying, 
Come unto me, all that travel and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. They don't feature very much in the modern liturgy, but I did use them, you may have noticed this morning. Because the Lord wants to welcome us at his table, and he wants to refresh us, and he so wants to give us rest. I love that image uh, of uh, John, St John the Apostle, at the Last Supper, leaning, according to some uh, translations, actually leaning upon the breast of our Lord at the Supper. And I think that's an image of what our Lord wants to do with all of us. He wants us so much to lay our heads upon his breast and to give us rest and refreshment and new life. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray to God the Father, who raised Jesus to life, and exalted him at his own right hand. Father, through the victory of the cross, you have lifted up Jesus from the earth. May he draw all to himself. Through the exaltation of Christ, send your spirit into the church. Make her the sign of unity for the whole human family. We pray for Libby, our bishop, the clergy and congregations of our diocese, for our three congregations in this benefice, and for Christians everywhere celebrating today. You have become the father of men and women, through water and the Spirit. Keep them faithful to their baptism until they enter eternal life. Through the exaltation of your Son, raise up the sorrowful, set prisoners free, heal the sick. May the whole world rejoice in your wonderful gifts. And among those who are sick, we especially remember Mike Bowen, Marjorie Harrison, Matthew Link, Ray Oxley, Carol Sanderson, Emma, Paul Boma, Ivor James Manor, Paul Wolfenden, and Rosina Epson. We pray for all who are suffering as a result of the virus and all who are anxious at this time and for all who are
consenting to alleviate suffering. And we remember the faithful departed, praying that they may share in the glory of the Lord on the day of resurrection. Especially remember Rachel Rampling, Derek Holmes, Christine Johns, and also Joseph Butterworth Priest and Joyce Else, whose years mind fall at this time. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell, and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant us by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me.
And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once of the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, bringing before you this bread and this cup, we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary and the Holy Apostles, Evangelists and Martyrs, St Giles, St John the Baptist, St Rosh and all the saints, may praise and glorify you for ever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in the one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us, therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The body of Christ. Amen. blood of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty God, may the Easter sacraments we have received live forever in our minds and hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. 